Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So this will actually be the last video of this playlist, which is the beginners Azura programming playlist. The plan for this video is to basically combine everything that we've done in the last 13 or so videos into one program. So we're gonna get the Azura driving forward, following a line, and then if it detects a collision, we'll get it to respond to that collision. Two things I do wanna mention before we jump into this video. In my last video, I had as part of the motor directions here, forward written in lowercase, just ensure that you change that to uppercase because it's not gonna flash successfully onto the Azure if it's written in lowercase. The function, the parameters are required that they're in uppercase and not lowercase. Okay, and remember as well, if you're having line following accuracy issues, then firstly, you can adjust the motor speeds of your Azure to either slower or faster. Um, and secondly, you can adjust the mid-range the value that we're selecting for the mid-range which what which we're saying is between light and darkness or black and white so in this instance we've got it to 800 one thing to keep in mind here which i could just actually write would be that the brighter your environment the higher this value should be right environment and uh and vice versa so the darker your room or environment then the lower this value should be and the brighter your room environment likewise the higher this value should be cool okay so let's get started as we always do with our pseudo code basically what we're going to do in, in this program let's let's get the description of our program down first so let's put program description and what we're going to do is we're going to say it's going to align following program that responds to collisions by reversing and spinning around okay so pseudo let's just do kind of like outline of the program okay so let's just do line following code and then what we're going to do is we're going to say within that we are going to check for collisions and then if collision okay right, so instead of check for collision we'll just go if collision here if there's been a collision, we're going to say reverse for half a second and then spin 180 degrees. And then let's say loop that whole thing. Yeah, I think that does it. So we're going to have a constant loop going where we're going to be following the line. And then if there's a collision, then reverse and then spin around and carry on. Do we have anything else to that? Mm, nothing that's all good. We'll just add the LEDs. We'll say, let's say LEDs, LEDs green if no collision, red if collision, and whilst reversing. I like that. I'm happy with that. So let's clean up this code. Okay, we're going to keep our init there. We're going to keep our while loop for our, our program. We're gonna keep our front LEDs turned on, that's fine. And we're gonna have our variable for our line following data, right? We've got a uh, function call there. Then we're comparing the values and then we're saying if one is higher than the other, do this or do that. Okay, so when, we're, when it comes to putting our collision code in, we want to make sure that obviously when it comes to programming the program can't run two different parts of its code at the same time it steps through code from here like that and then goes to another part and it runs one bit of code at the same time it might do it very fast so you can have the appearance that it's multitasking but the azure doesn't multitask so one thing to keep in mind here is that we want to make sure that we're checking for the collision within here we want to check here check for collision here and we also likewise want to do the same in here as well because if we're only checking for the collision here then whilst the line is so whilst the line is to the left then it won't be checking for a collision so we want to make sure that we're constantly checking for a collision on both sides so we'll put our collision code here if you remember it's uh, obviously the if statement and then it's the pole switch function there's no parameters that go into it, but we just check if it's greater than zero, right? If it is, let's turn the status LED red, right? Then 
Let's do the motor directions and get them to reverse. Right. And we'll do we'll change the motor speed for them as well. Let's make it a hundred. You don't want the Azura to reverse too fast. It kind of loses control. Alright, and then let's we want it to reverse for a certain amount of time. Like this currently right now, it will detect the the collision like that, reverse for a split second, and then carry on hitting the object and keep trying to reverse for a split second. So we want it to reverse for a small amount of time. So let's make an in i equals zero variable here, and then we'll make an i for loop here. So for i is equal to zero. Oops i is let's say less than 50 i plus plus so when it comes to these values i'm just guessing right now but what you want to do is you want to just you can either just guess and then flash it to the zero and see how it goes there's no harm in doing that I, i'm a trial and error kind of guy so I, I like to do that myself so here we've got it sleeping for three milliseconds 50 times all right, so that will have it reverse for a small period. Then we probably want to spin the Azura. So we're going to do, let's copy this again. And spinning it, we're going to set one to forward, one to backwards. Let's spin it a little bit faster. Set it at 130. And then we're going to do it for a, another small, short period of time. It's going to need to spin for slightly more time. So let's go with 100. And then that's that. So the Azura is reversing. We can put that here. Reversing. And then, okay. So that should work. So the only thing we need to do now is then just put this whole bit of code again here. Because like I said, we want it to check for collision in both bits. Now, if you're any good at C programming, you know that, you know, this is unnecessarily long but obviously this is for beginners so if i'm able to I'll, I'll make a intermediate playlist for programming and we'll talk about how we can shorten this code but for now keep it simple okay so we're comparing both the the, the line data in the photo transistors at the front and we're saying okay follow the line but if there's a collision here then stop following the line and reverse for a period do it for a short amount of time and then spin for a short amount of time then obviously there'd no longer be a collision here right so that would be back to zero and so it would then come back to this while loop and just check these if statements again and then just carry on following the line okay one thing i do want to implement which i'm thinking about is that if we spin the azura it's possible that it won't especially if it's a straight line and it turns 180 degrees it will be back on the line right but if it's not a straight line or for whatever reason it's already got slightly bent then you might end up in white space so what i want to do i want to write some sort of code to say if you're on white space and you're not any you, neither of the transistors the photo transistors are on a black line they both have the same value or similar values in white territory then slow the motors down just go slowly and hopefully then maybe we can write some code in future for how to find the line but let's get it to slow down the motors so it doesn't go as fast that's what i'm thinking okay so we can do that we do we have to do that outside of this if statement here so if now what we can do is we can just put if both of the pieces of both of the transistors the data coming in from them if both of them are over 800 then we can just say set the motors to forward but go slowly to forward right and let's set it to 70 okay i'm actually thinking that instead of i've just realized that instead of writing if again Obviously, you just have the standard if else. So I can just write if else. Right. And that's that. 
you see, sometimes you overcomplicate your code, and that's what I mean by simplifying it. Someone for someone to read that, they'd be thinking, huh? Okay, so you have to then start translating it into English in your head. Instead, just make that an else. So what it's saying here is that if the values are below 800, both of them, then do all of this code. Otherwise, just drive slowly. Now the issue here is that if there's a collision, whilst it's on white space, then nothing's going to happen. So we need, we need to then copy and paste the in, in again our code for the collision. So copy all of that into here. And then we have our collision code again. So like I said, in, in the intermediate playlist, we'll go over, you know, we will make this exact program in half the half the lines of code. So, but for now, don't worry about it. Okay, and I think that would work. Let me flash it to the zero and see how it does. Okay, so that didn't go great. Um, I missed out a few things, so let's go through them. So in terms of the status LED, I needed to turn it green at the beginning of the while loop for the program. So the most while loop, the inner one, that's the one that we wanted so that as soon as the, the program keeps on looping through, it turns the status LED back to green because obviously we're turning it red when we're doing the reversing. So I had to add that back in. But the main adjustments that I needed to make was I had to increase from 800 to 1000. My room was quite bright, bright daylight right underneath a window as well. So I increased it from 800 to 1000 and that that is going to increase the accuracy big time. And then secondly, my motors were making like a screeching sound. That usually happens when there's not enough torque in the motors to move it. So I increased my motor speed from 70 to 80 for when, you know, when it's on the white and it's not near a line, it's not detecting any line. So when it's above a thousand, right, then I've got the motors moving at 80. So that would make them move a bit faster. And so let's take a look at how that looks now. So as you can see, it's significantly better, smooth, it detects collision straight away. It's very, very nice. I'm very, very happy with that. Okay, cool. So that's it for me for my beginner Azura play playlist. I'll be making an intermediate playlist next. One thing I would suggest is before watching the intermediate playlist, go and watch some C program tutorials, get comfortable with things like functions and stuff. I'm going to veer away now from explaining the basics. And I'm going to go just more into actually the actual programming side of the Azura. And I'm not going to talk about the C side of things whereby I'm explaining what X and Y or what for loops. I'm not going to explain any of that. So, yeah, if you enjoyed this series, give it a like. And if you want to go a bit deeper, watch my intermediate playlist. I'll link that in the description once I've started creating that. I haven't made it yet. But, yeah, just take a look on my channel for that. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it if you watch all the videos as well. And if you get stuck with anything, just leave a comment down below. Cool. See you in the next one. Peace.